Can you explain the difference between replace by fee and child pays for parent? What are the use cases? Uh, Becker, this is a great question. Replace by fee or RBF and child pays for parent or CPFP are two mechanisms used to uh, bump the fee of a transaction in Bitcoin when that transaction has, um, due to a demand for blockchain space, um, become uh, stuck. Effectively, it's not getting mined into a block. You've made a transaction, but it's not getting mined into a block because it doesn't have sufficient fee. So what do you do? Well, um, there are two ways to bump the fee. One requires some proactive uh, activity. The other one can be done in a more flexible way. Replace by fee is a flag that is set in your transaction when you send it that tells everybody this transaction may get replaced by another transaction that has a higher fee. Now, what that means is that this transaction is even less trustworthy under zero confirmation conditions. Not really, because you can do that by double spending a transaction anyway. What it means is um, primarily that the transaction ID may change. So if more fee is added, um, to a replace by fee transaction, one of the most obvious things that happens is the transaction ID changes. Uh, and so if you're looking at that transaction at a block explorer, you uh, might see it um, marked as double spent. Uh, and that's because um, hopefully the sender replaced it with a transaction paying higher fee. Let me break this down for you. RBF is something the sender of a transaction does and says, this transaction is currently paying a fee, but in the future, I will want to have the option to increase that fee if my transaction is not confirmed in the time frame I want. Now, in my wallet, all transactions I make are RBF, meaning that every transaction I make with one of my wallets has the RBF flag on it and is basically saying, I'm trying to be a cheap ass here. I'm going to go in with the lowest fee I think will make it. And if I find out in an hour or two hours or three hours that it's still not confirmed, or if it gets to a point where I really need it to be confirmed a bit more urgently, I'm gonna come back and I'm gonna bump this fee up so that I can get it confirmed, but I'm not gonna overpay in advance because I'm a cheap ass. So one Satoshi per byte is all you get. All of my transactions, RBF on one Satoshi per byte, and then just hope for the best. Sometimes it works, sometimes it doesn't. Um, child pays for parent is interesting because it's a slightly different formulation and has different characteristics. Child pays for parent is something the recipient or the sender can do to get a stuck transaction confirmed, um, mined into the next block. Now where RBF can only be done by the sender, child pays for parent can be done by the sender or the recipient or under some circumstances with anchor payments by any third party. And we'll talk a bit about that in a second. All right, so what does child pay for parent do? It takes advantage of a uh, mining policy where um, transactions are not considered in isolation, but they are considered as packages especially when there is a parent transaction and one of its outputs is being spent by a child transaction and both of those transactions have yet to be confirmed. They're sitting in the mempool. So when you look at transactions in the mempool, they might just be isolated transactions or they might be chains of transactions where you have one transaction, some of its change is then spent or some of its outputs are being spent by another transaction and another transaction and another transaction in a chain. And this chain needs to be confirmed altogether. You can't confirm one of the children until the parents have been confirmed. They're all waiting in the mempool. Now, the interesting thing here is that from the miner's perspective, what matters is not the fees in any one of those transactions in the package, but the overall level of fees across the entire package. So if by confirming all of them, uh, you can get a higher level of fee per byte when aggregated together, that's an appealing proposition to miners. All they care about is the fundamental metric of fee per byte. So that means if you put a parent transaction, if you put a transaction 
into the mempool and it's not being confirmed, what you can do is you can purposely create a child transaction in order to add fee by making the child overpay so that it carries along the parent by increasing the average fee across the two. So let's say your parent pays one Satoshi per byte and your child pays, let's say three Satoshi per byte and they're the same um, size, then effectively the sum is four Satoshi um, and divide by two or something like that. I probably got the math wrong. But the bottom line is the average Satoshi per byte between the two is what matters. And so, um, yeah, and in fact, that would be two Satoshi per V-byte across the two. Now, the interesting use case here is that this is something the recipient can do or the sender can do. Let's say I um, pay my friend Bob and um, pay them with a, a simple normal transaction. Usually most transactions have one input, two outputs. Um, so I've spent one of my inputs, I've made a payment to Bob, that's Bob's output. And then there's another output, which let's call it Andreas's change, which is my change output. Now, um, by creating a child that spends Bob's output, Bob can create that child to bump the fee of the transaction I sent to Bob that hasn't been confirmed and get both of those confirmed faster. So Bob can execute child pays for parent because Bob has an output that they can use to create a child transaction. But I can also use child pays for parent because the change that's coming back to me is also an output that I can spend to create a child transaction that pays more fee and therefore bump the original transaction even if that original transaction did not use RBF. I hope this is not too confusing. RBF, sender only, um, signaling in advance that we may replace the transaction with a transaction with more fee. Child pays for parent, taking advantage of the fact that transactions are considered as packages. And if there is a parent, a child, a grandchild, a great grandchild, etc., etc., the average fee across all of them is taken into consideration. So if you purposely create um, a child transaction, a descendant transaction with a higher fee, it increases the parent's opportunity to get confirmed as well. And that's why the child is effectively paying for the parent. There is a very interesting use case of this in the Lightning Network where um, you can create within a commitment transaction um, a payment output that is dust, meaning that it's not a significant amount of Satoshis, um, but uh, can be used as an input to make a child that bumps up the fee for the parent. And that means that you don't have to overpay commitment transaction fees in advance to ensure that you can uh, resolve protocol um, protocol disputes and penalties, um, but you can actually allow either party in a Lightning payment channel to bump the commitment transaction um, by creating a child off one of the dust outputs, which is one of the anyone can spend. It's an interesting concept. Uh, I believe those are called anchor payments. It's a new proposal that's being implemented as part of the Lightning protocol. Hi, thanks for watching the video. I'm Andreas Antonopoulos. I'm the author of Mastering Bitcoin, Mastering Ethereum, and the Internet of Money series. If you'd like to support my mission of bringing education about Bitcoin and open blockchains to as many people as possible under open, free Creative Commons licenses, please consider subscribing to my channel and supporting me on patreon.com slash A-A-N-T-O-N-O-P. Thank you.